guys stay tuned for one, two, two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. And today we're gonna be finishing our look at the best monsters of every type in Yu-Gi-Oh. If you guys missed part one, I'll put a link or have Ryan do it or something somewhere so that you don't miss the, the, the first part because it's probably important. Now that we're firmly in the month of October, I'm gonna just uh, throw a quick announcement in here. Down in the description below, you can go to my Teespring where we have a limited edition October design Pumpkin Spice, the king of lattes. Make sure you order them soon because with the pandemic and stuff, uh, who knows when you'll get any of this crap. Uh, I think you can expedite it, but you know, it is what it is. And over on my second channel, Enemy Controller, by the time this video is up, I will be starting my Pokemon Shield Let's Play with my girlfriend Amanda. Oh, hi, look at you, Ashley, that big old... <laughs> Yo, bag. <laughs> Which is turning out to be a lot of fun, so go check that out as well. And without further ado, let's just, uh, let's just bang out the rest of these monsters. Wow! Just like the first part, every entry is going to get an honorable mention and a actual main spot on the list. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time in every entry because we have a lot to get through. So if you feel like I forgot something, just stick it down in the comments below. Like I said, I probably mentioned it. I probably cut it out <laughs> because I tend to yammer. And I also got to film some stuff for the other channel tonight too. So, oh, it's gonna be one of those ones. So let's get started. First up, we have probably my favorite typing in the game, the Aquas. Oh, Aqua, just like fire and pyro, you're the water attribute written twice. It's incredibly disrespectful. But unlike pyros, uh, being an aqua water actually has some benefit. For things like our honorable mention, Swap Frog. He's an aqua, he discards waters, he dumps aquas from, from the deck to the graveyard. Probably Ronin Toten, but you could you could do other things. Does the Foolish Burial on normal and special summon has an ability to special summon himself. He's a one card engine. The card's fantastic. Being an Aqua certainly is a boon to a card. Especially if you're a level two Aqua because you can make the entry for the list. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. Totally awesome is my favorite card in the game because got a stupid pun for a name. The artwork is ridiculous. All stacked on top of one of the absolute best XC monsters we have in the game. Toad can negate pretty much anything, monster effects, spells, or traps and you can pay the cost from the field or the hand. That's super versatile. And not only that, not only that, whatever you negate with his effect, you can destroy, send to the graveyard, then set to your side of the field to use your opponent's resources against them. Hippity hoppity, your shit's now my property. Fucking idiot. And not only that, during the standby phase, on either player's turn, he can summon a frog from your deck. On your opponent's turn, you summon Dupe Frog to run interference with its battle protection. And on your standby phase, you summon Swap Frog to get more crap in your grave and keep your engine going. The card's so dumb. I love me, my hoppy boy. Fairy's got some pretty solid typing with some pretty solid monsters in this game. A lot of them are absolutely devastating Flungate monsters. Our honorable mention is certainly one of them, the Shockmaster. The Shockmaster! <laughs> I told you. Number 16 is a rank four monster made of three level fours, which you're going to say, ew, three level four is terrible. That's gross, Dave. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. Not ideal, but uh, you get what you pay for with him. Because once per turn, you can detach from them and tell your opponent they can't use one of the three types of cards in the games, monsters, spells, or drafts. Just simply, no, you can't use monster effects this turn. What a shame that would be. When you're playing against something like spell books or sky strikers, you're like, it'd be really a shame if you couldn't use spells there, boy. Come on, Konami, hashtag unlock the shock. This card's ridiculous, and if you can sneak them in at the end of a board, Oh crap. But in order to get those three level fours on board, as well as some other monsters in order to help run interference, you're gonna need some serious combo power in order to do that. Well, that's what the uh, the entry on the fairy spot is gonna be for. It's Norden, baby. This level four fairy monster is the perfect instant fusion target because when it is special summoned, not fusion summoned, special summoned, you can target a level four or lower monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Its effects are negated and you banish at the end of the turn, but we all know that that's not gonna happen. He himself to level four. He's the perfect rank four engine. And with links, the card's great. He's also not all once per turn. 
And you know what? Instant Fusion properly fusion summons a card, so you can resurrect him from the graveyard to keep Lubitum as much as you want. Probably good that it's banned. Although I should probably note that it wasn't actually Instant Fusion that probably got this thing banned. It was actually the loop with Fusion Substitute, which is just spicy polymerization. I'm sure Instant Fusion wasn't helping though. Aw oh, yeah, here comes the Beastie Boys again. With the beast type proper this time. And for honorable mention, we got this cutie, Rescue Cat. The whole rescue archetype is really fantastic, summoning a bunch of crap from your deck. However, I would say that Rescue Cat here is probably the most powerful, summoning two level three or lower beast monsters from your deck. There is some pretty nasty things you can make with level three or lower monsters with really no other restriction stuck to them. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Not only that, but beasts are a pretty well-supported type, so being a beast, playing this in beast decks, there's a lot of just generic support to prop the card up. And because it's a well-supported type, there's a menagerie of trap between tuners and lights and darks and all the other kind of things you can think of can pretty much unlock your entire extra deck with whatever you could possibly want. Especially this. The entry for our list, Nutria Beast. A level five synchro monster made of an earth tuner and a non-tuner earth monster. Yes, it is landlocked in mono earth decks, but something like your rescue cat can pretty much just make this with one normal summon. Even being a weird level five instead of a six or a four is no problem for our rescue cat here. And why did you want to make Naturi Beast? Because it's fan freaking tastic. When a spell card is activated quick effect, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard as cost to negate that spell card and destroy it. That's not once per turn. It's not even once per chain. Naturi Beast is freaking stupid. The card is great. Against the right deck, it's pretty much an auto win. Basically being able to just negate every single spell card your opponent has at the ridiculous cost of sending two cards from your deck to the graveyard. In most instances, that's not even cost. That's just graveyard setup and helping you. Plus he's a kitty. All right, are you guys ready for the next one? Cause I am, I'm really ready. I'm rock hard right now. For rocks. Being rock type in the history of the game has always been kind of hit or miss. They're, back in the day it was way under supported, now it's pretty good. Especially now we got a rank 4 that actually searches the whole thing. And if we're going to be talking about rocks that define formats, oh boy we got one coming from outer space. And that's Nibiru. Nibiru is a hand trap that when your opponent summons five or more monsters during turn, you can just tribute everything on board and give them a big dumb token and give yourself the rock. So you're telling me I have a quick effect kaiju in my hand now? Wow, that's that's just really stupid. If you want to freak your opponent out while they're going through their wombo combos, just start counting. You don't even have to have the Nibiru in your hand. Just, just count. See what they do. See if they play around it. Just screw with them. I'm not sure that's even legal to do. But what could possibly be better than the big rock? The block. B block dragon. It's basically Earth BLS. You banish rocks from your graveyard to summon the damn thing. But you can summon it from your hand or graveyard. That's just real good. It does give you a blanket protection to all your rock monsters, but he's probably not sticking around long enough for that. Because if it leaves the field to the graveyard, you can search free rock monsters. What? No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. Who's total level equal eight? You know, we gotta have some kind of restriction on it. You link it away, you search like three cards out of your deck. This is, that's ridiculous. That's why it's banned. Come on. And he's fantastic support for the rock type. Man, rocks got good real quick. From here on out, everything's just a one banger after another. So the order is a bit subjective. How about Fiend next? And for our honorable mention, we'll go with our home girl, Tour Guide from the Underworld. Wow! Soon, baby. Soon. This waifu came right out at the end of the Synchro era and you couldn't even use her for Synchro summons. Everyone's like, what the hell are you for? And then we got Xyz and you're like, oh, she's perfect for that. And Rank 3's kind of came out of the gate pretty good and have been consistently good for since the history of the game since. Uh, probably arguably not as good as Rank 4, but certainly up there. And being a one card Rank 3 is just really good. And now with Lynx, things that can make ranks can make Lynx most of the time. So she just, she gets better. And she gets fiends, she supports fiends. Seems like it's on brand for the list. So what could possibly be better than her? I don't know. Say outer entity. Yes. What are you going to the Halloween party as? As a thought. 
When it's sexy summons, your opponent can't use monster effects for the rest of the turn. People are finding ways of cheesing this out on your opponent's turn to shut down their hand traps and stuff. It's it's really good. I'm sorry about that. Wham bam dino slam. It's dino time, fam. Ugh, what's wrong with me? And for honorable mention, we got the big bad T-Rex himself. Dinosaurs are actually a really interesting type in this game. We really don't have a dinosaur archetype. We have a couple of them, but they're all like really bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. Instead, we have a dinosaur deck that is comprised of mostly just dinosaur supporting monsters and not a dinosaur archetype itself, which is actually kind of unique for the type. It's as close to monster mash as you can get in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And part of the reason why is because dinosaurs support themselves as a type first and foremost really well, with tons of spell cards that search dinosaurs. Not dinosaurs stuck to archetypes, just dinosaurs. Even dinosaurs. And having a big, bad, beat stick boss monster that is a mass book of moon effect and does effect damage against face down monsters, you know what? That's just icing on the cake. With all this crazy dinosaur support, this gives you something to go into and smack for game. But if we're gonna give the crown to one of the dinosaurs as the poster boy of the typing, I think we're gonna have to give it to Miscellaneousaurus. With the most literal generic name possible, <laughs> Miscellaneousaurus just supports the type really well and he's a fantastic card. Like any really good monster in the game, he just does a lot. During either player's turn, you can use his hand trap effect to make all dinosaur type monsters you control unaffected by your opponent's activated card effects. Pretty neat. And you can banish dinosaurs from your graveyard, including this card, to summon a dinosaur from your deck, whose level equals the number of banished cards. So he puts himself in a grave to protect your guys, and then you can banish him to summons more guys. He is just one of the important linchpins of the deck, and with your big bad boss monster as an honorable mention, you already have half the tools you need to make a oddly successful, rather inexpensive, competitive deck. Spellcaster? Wow. Had you asked me, I might have thought this one would have been a little higher on the list, but then I remember what the remaining types are, and then I was like, oh, right. And as for an honorable mention, we'd have to go with our boy Exodia. The unstoppable Exodia. Ugh. He's instant win condition. It's the best effect you can have on a card. That's kind of a joke. I mean, it did run worlds once, but that, that's, that's a joke. You also could go with the Dark Magician. He is the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. Told you I was the master. How about you guys down in the comments below give me an honorable mention for what you think the spellcaster entry should be. But as far as the actual list proper, we're definitely gonna give it to Summon Sorceress. She banned, but she waifu, so there is that. I could talk about how amazing her effect is, letting you just like grab anything you want out of your deck, but instead, let's talk about just how great this artwork is. She get a spot on this list just for that. It, it's not like I have a type or anything. She lets you summon from the hand, lets you summon from the deck. She's got pretty solid arrows. I, I mean, there's a reason why she was banned. She was part of every ridiculous wombo combo ever created, obviously. Coming out of the gate strong is the Cyburst type. Relatively new, uh, debuting with the debut of Lynx, this type has really proven to be a really big powerhouse in the modern era. Basically being the poster boy for the Link monsters, kind of like Psychics were for Synchros, but being a million times more successful and having like a, just a bunch of banned cards. For honorable mention, we got Gumblar Dragon. Ugh. Gumblar Dragon just has a bunch of stupid effects that makes you discard cards out of your opponent's hand. If another monster is summoned to a zone this guy points to, you can knock cards out of your opponent's hand. And if he's extra linked, you can knock cards out of your opponent's hand. Just knock cards out of your opponent's hand. It's cool. Everyone likes that kind of gameplay. And as a Link 4 made of two plus effect monsters, that means he's pretty easy to make as far as Link 4s are concerned. So how the hell are we gonna top that? Well, probably one of the cards you might use to help make him, Firewall Dragon. Ugh. I told you, these, these, these cybers just came out of the gate swinging, man. Firewall Dragon's another Link 4. Two plus monsters, even more generic, neat. With a dumb quick effect to bounce things in the graveyard or the field once, depending on how much he's co-linked with. Well, that doesn't sound very good, Dave. It's just Compulse. Oh, it's actually, it's really more a second effect. If a monster this card points to leaves the field, summon a monster from your hand. That's not once per turn. <laughs> Idea being that the more you link summon, the more you summon from your hand, and then you can just put a bunch of dudes on board so you can extra link or whatever, and actually, you know, do link summoning. 
clearly that was Firewall Dragon's point, was to sell the Link mechanic. Here is a monster that facilitates the mechanic ridiculously well, because it just keeps putting crap on board. The more you do the stuff, the more stuff you have to do it with. Issue being, like, it took the player base all but five minutes to figure out how to make FTKs with this stupid thing. Over and over and over. Because, funny enough, if something's not once per turn, it's really good. But hey, it got us to adopt the blue cards. So it did its- it did its job, I guess. Oh man, this is like trying to pick a favorite kid of zombies. For our honorable mention, we'll go with Unizombie. Being a tuner that dumps monsters from your hand and from your deck to the graveyard to modulate levels. Well, that's just really good. And it's zombies, so he supports zombies. He's a foolish burial for zombies. He's a tuner for zombies. Zombies like to synchro summon. It sets up your grave, it sets up your field, it sets up your synchro plays. This is a really, really good tuner monster. And as far as the theming of the video is concerned, he's he's probably a really good contender, certainly, for the list proper. You know, he is an honorable mention after all, and a hard honorable mention. But I have to give it to Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Not Ash Blossom and Joyous Feet. If you play Feet, you also probably play Mystic Mine. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring might not have a lot to do with being a zombie type, but the fact that everyone and their mother plays her, uh, that makes up for it really, really hard. We couldn't in good conscience not give the spot to one of the most played cards in the game, because what do you know, a hand trap that stops your opponent from adding cards from their deck to their hand, or summoning from their deck, or milling from their deck, just doing anything with their stupid deck. Because go figure, your, your opponent needs to do that stuff in order to make their plays work, so a hand trap that says no, good. It's just good. And it's a tuner in level three. It's a fire for some reason, but it's got a decent defense power. Don't play the one with the feet. All right, fam, it's time. It's time for the big boys. It's time for the dragons. Rawr! Dragons have always been a big part of Yu-Gi-Oh. It was like one of the first things Kaiba ever did in the show was summon a bunch of dragons to scare the shit out of Yu-Gi. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. Yugi just blew him up, but hey, he was pretty, he was sweating bullets there for a minute. And the dragons are always the biggest, baddest guys in the block. I don't know, because they're big dragons, I guess. So what the hell are we gonna put on the list for those? There's there's a million dragons in this freaking game. Well, honorable mention, we'll give it to we'll give it to Dr. Red here. Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, or Red MD, or Dr. Red, if you're cheeky like I am, lets you put him on board by banishing a face of dragon and can summon a dragon from your graveyard or your hand. Ooh, nice, extendo, combo. They routed him to make him like a hard one's return, but eh, who cares? He's still really good. He's still a dark. He's still a dragon. He's level 10, which is kind of cute. You can do some fun stuff with that. You better believe when the doctor's in, he's got a prescription for combo. Oh, that was stupid. But nah, we're gonna give it to a pain in the ass. Agra pain in the ass. Ugh. Link 2 monster, and it's a dragon, go figure. But ironically, not very big. Only 1500 attack power. But it lets you summon a dragon monster from your extra deck. Just cheese it out of your extra deck. It's banned for a reason, folks. That's just so free. He does basically what Dr. Red does, but you can get some cheese with that. Dragon Link is a deck. It's been a deck for a while. Agrippane was a big part of it. The deck still works without him, but it sure would like to have him. All right, we're getting down to the wire here. Final guess is on what you think the best type in the game is. Number two is machines. Ah, so if you're keeping track, you can guess what one is now. Machines are great. <laughs> Being a machine is an immediate boost to cards because there's a bunch of weird extra deck monsters that you can make simply because your dudes are machines. It opens your deck up to some pretty, pretty neat deck building possibilities. And if your machines are earth or if they're light, that also does some stuff for you. And if they're level fives or level eights or tens or whatever, you also get fun options. So it's like, being a machine is cool. And your generic support and your spell cards is just real good. Damn shame about that system down though, having a, having a particularly powerful anti-support card to be used against you. But you know what, that's okay. You also got Fortress Dragon, which is just, yeah, it's real good. It's just, that's good removal right there. But uh, for honorable mention, we're gonna have to give it to our noodly boy, Halka for Brax here. Halka for Brax, brookie brooks, bleh. Beetle Fiber is a fantastic Link 2 monster that turns any tuner and non-tuner into a Link 2. Nice. He also summons a tuner from your deck. <laughs> oh, that's, 
That's a good use of card advantage. You'd be surprised what kind of cheesy garbage you can tease out of your deck with this. He also has a quick effect to summon a synchro monster, but like, but that gets used not as much because most of the time he hits the field, gets something else, then immediately leaves for something else. But you do have the option to make like that, that locust thing on your opponent's turn if you want to be a cheeky f There's just a lot you can do with this noodly boy. You could even play him in Chris Johns. Proper machine list entry, we're gonna give it to Dengirsu. Orcus is a real good deck, a real good deck. is their, their boss monster. He's real good. He removes cards from the field. It's good, it's good removal. Doesn't target, that's the best kind. And you don't even have to make him proper. He's got one of those cheesy like fake XC effects like infinity and stuff. So, you know, that's just good options to have. And he protects your crap from destruction. It's just a lot of stuff for a monster to do. And having a 2600 body is big enough to be annoying. This card is great. And oh boy, is it obnoxious to play around. God, non-targeting removal is such a it's BS, man. What do I chain? I don't know. It's great when your opponent just summons it a bunch of times too, isn't it? All right, guys, instead of uh, sponsors, we're going to do a pack opening. My buddy Thomas sent me some of this stuff on a mail day the other day. So we're going to we're actually going to finally get to this stuff. All right, let's do this thing. Yo, Rip, they sold me foam. All right, so we got right on the top here. Crystal Dragon Obelisk the Tormentor. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. What is this from? Legendary Collection 1. Okay, so that's the promo from the box itself. 10 out of 10, best block of foam. All right, we got a bunch of packs. What's in here? We got Secret Forces. Oh, look, a hero deck. Cool, that's actually not a bad deck to get. Some singles. Uh, just some ran some random insectors, a Gishki and Foolish Return, Blue Eyes White Dragon, the Shiny Victory, and a Metal Raider. Definitely not gonna open the deck because you guys know what's in this thing, and if you don't, you can literally look it up. It's the it's the hero structure deck. We're actually doing a, a structure deck tournament on my Discord right now. You guys, join the Patreon if you guys want to get in on my tournaments. Freezies. Tuners high. More like. Tuners low. Ha. Got him. Nice. I love how the, the Secret Forces puts the good card right in the front of the pack. So you know whether or not you, you whiffed or not. Oh, damn. Vanity's emptiness, boy. Back in the day, this would have been a hell of a freaking pull. Now it's probably worth diddly shit. All right, uh, Metal Raiders. Metal Raiders is probably my, my one of my favorite packs of all time. I have a lot of memories with Metal Raiders. I don't know why. I probably bought more of that than Blue Eyes White Dragon. All right. Okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's a bad card, but it's cool. Sangan, nice. All right, we got the the old the OG Boomer pack in Yu-Gi-Oh here. Your love is like red medicine. Red medicine is what I pulled. Whoa! Last cube. All right, that was surprisingly difficult to get the cellophane off of. Star Pendulum Graph broke. You know what? These all all shiny sets really really lower the value of these power cube things because they're like oh yeah there's hollows in this yeah technically speaking it's a big stack we got lila sign of card of last will broke so broke it's not legal that fiend griefing <laughs> anything cool anything great i think i saw a hollow no not really these are just from literally all over the history of the game Look at this, some of this stuff is old as dirt. Some of it's new-ish. Yeah, nothing in here. Cool. And we got a couple packs. Another Blue Eyes, Galactic Overlord, and Extreme Forces. Hey, that's a newer pack. Let's open this one. Mahjong. Link. Oh, Hextia, nice. And Scramble Egg, nice. I'm glad I got a Scramble Egg. I got the meme card. All right, anything cool? Photon Papalaparat. Papala blah blah blah. Legacy pack. Maybe we'll pull Blue Eyes White Dragon. Or Exodia. No one's been ever, ever able to pull him. Nice, Mammoth Graveyard. Book of Secret Rights. Nice! Yes! Yes! All right, we pulled Diddly Crap in the, all three. All right, you must have guessed it, what number one is. It's Warriors. 
Not only are they a great movie, they're a great type in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arguably one of the most supported, and half of it is for heroes. <laughs> Jokes aside, heroes are a good archetype mostly because they're warrior. They have their own Rota, and they actually have Rota. Hell, they have the card that we use to call other cards that do what it does. Things that are Rotas are named after Rota, which is for warriors. That's how good this thing is. That's how good of a typing they are. Amma Mention's gotta go to one of the best Link monsters we got, Zul. Yeah, she's a good girl. She works real good in Noble Knights, but no one's playing that. Big Noble Knights, maybe. Not the, not the OG ones, certainly. <laughs> she does work good in that, though. But nah, when she hits the field, she searches stuff. She can send stuff. There's a, a equip spell specifically, but there's some cheesy crap you can do with that. And she can special summon stuff. All that stuff is warriors. She supports the type, she's made of the type, she makes the type better. But nah, we're gonna give it to, uh, we're gonna give it to this bad boy, Bardish. The Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish, whatever a Bardish is. Wow. Nice drawing. A rusty one. I gave my girlfriend a rusty Bardish the other day. Ew, gross. <laughs> This video's running long. Just like any other good card in the game, it gets stuff when you make it, and it, it, it increases the amount of card advantage. I could just say that for every card. You get more card advantage when you make it. It's good. Next card. But it also has the targeted destruction ability, as well as allowing you to set Fog Blade from your deck, which is just a free negate. Fog Blade is just spicy fiendish chain, but being able to grab it from your deck immediately makes it a thousand times better. Sure, Salem Strike is a better card, but you don't, you can't really search Salem Strike. You can search Fog Blade though. That's pretty nasty. But he's a warrior. What do you know? You might be able to flip flop his old and him because he's just a really good card with really good support, part of a good deck. But she's more generically supporting the type, so you can flip him however you want. I like Bardish as the entry because Fog Blade, that's spicy. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the series. This was a lot of stuff to film. This is like an hour of footage. I can't wait to see how short I can get this. I yammered too much. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Remember guys, if you don't troll the metal, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. <laughs> Clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yugi tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba. Let's go get ice cream.